I'm Adam Scottson here at Petfordton Castle for Warrington Wolves' annual media day ahead of the 2019 Betfred Super League season. We'll have interviews with Stefan Ratchford, club captain Chris Hill and brand new sign-in Blake Austin. Let's check it out. Best drive, probably scored. When we played Halifax in Northern Rail, final at um, Blackpool. Got a couple, managed to get a couple whilst I've been at Warrington, but one of my favourite tries was probably actually against Warrington when I was at Salford. Um, I think it might have been about 2010. We played at Murrayfield. We got absolutely battered by about 60 points, but um, right at the back end of the game, I just ended up with a ball in my hand and I tried a little grubber kick through and somehow ended up with a ball and went through and I think Chris Riley or someone was at full back and I chipped him and the ball bounced and I got the ball back and, and scored. So that yeah, that's one that stands out for me. Probably my, my first ever try in the, in the NRL was my second game and I'd actually, I'd started on the bench and I, I literally, I, I got subbed on on the 40 metre line I was and, and our team was attacking the try line. And as I was subbed on, it was last tackle. So, and the ball was out on the right side, so they were doing a crossfield kick to the left. So I sort of handed me an interchange card over and I, I've sprinted on and, and sprinted straight down the touch line. And as I've got there, the wingers batted it straight back into my hands and I, I sort of placed it down. So I'd only been on the field for less than, than 20 seconds. And Best kicker? It's a pretty tough question, that actually. Uh, probably in play, I've, I've probably Jonathan Thurston. You know, Jonathan Thurston was up there. If we can try and shy away from Jonathan Thurston, Who's the best kicker that you've seen? Goal kicking, I reckon. I reckon Steph's up there. He can he can nail them from anywhere. I mean, there's been some good ones, but I think Hazemel Masri's uh, he's been one of the best you, we, we've seen. Um, Andrew Johns was obviously very good, and um, I'm not sure about percentage-wise, but you know, I think there's certainly been better than Thurston. But the person, one of the best kicks I've ever seen, and I absolutely hated it when I played against him, was Pat Richards and his kickoffs. His kickoffs were ridiculous. The amount of movement, the amount of height he got on the ball was absolutely ridiculous. I remember in my debut season, we played Wigan away and I was stood waiting to catch the ball. It wouldn't have been long into the game and Pat Richards put this big spiral bomb up that I'd, obviously I'd only been watching on TV. Caught it and as I looked up, uh, Mickey Ayam and uh, Fekka Palliacina stood in front of me. So I was like, oh dear. And anyway, I ran in and they both absolutely picked me up and ragged all me. So yeah, Pat Richards and his kickoffs would be a nightmare. Yeah, I'd probably put Hazemel Masri up in, uh, as the pinnacle. He's the guy that really uh, transformed the, the role. And um, obviously, uh, he was a handy footballer, but everyone certainly knows him for his goal kicking. And, you know, I played with a guy in Canberra, Jared Croker, that um, you know, has a really handy uh, success rate and someone that I've witnessed put in countless hours. And you know, it's a role that, that, that can't be taken lightly. It um, takes a lot of hours and practice to get get the balls to go through the sticks more often than not. Again, I've probably got quite a few memorable moments, but um, you, know, you could probably say like, you know, international debut, Super League debut. One, you know, probably that really stands out is the 2012 Challenge Cup. Probably making the England debut. Um, I don't think anyone can take that away from you. Um, it was at uh, Wrexham Stadium. You know, to, it was my first season at Warrington and one of the reasons I decided to come to Warrington was to you know, give myself a chance to win trophies and to achieve that in, in my first year was yeah, an absolute dream come true. Is there any moment, like a golden point moment, when you played in, in the NRL that, that stuck out? What was the best one you've been involved in? Probably might be quite a few. Or uh, we, No, we had one at Canberra, so we, we, I think there was about three, three minutes or a little bit less than three minutes on the clock and I actually kicked the one-pointer to get us one point in front. So we sort of thought that was going to be enough, but we raced back and we were playing the Knights and they ended up getting getting to the kickoff with about 40 seconds remaining and they had time to do their kickoff and they went short, batted it back and two plays later they ended up kicking the field goal to draw it back up. So um, then it had to go to Golden Point and uh, we sort of went shot for shot for the first five minutes and um, no one could hit one and then I went for one in the second half of the, the Golden Point period and it actually sprayed to the right and there's footage of the coach on the sideline like spraying me for missing the kick and stuff like that. but. Um, as they've flashed to him and, and quickly flashed away, the ball's actually landed in the in goal and bounced back into the hands of our winger. So off a drop kick, it actually, um, you know, I call it a try assist because it, it landed straight in the hands of our winger and he, he scored the try and won the game. Best post game song. Last year we started a really good one at Warrington and we've, we've continued with that. We're going to have this, that song for this year as well. Some of the ones back home are, are quite boring, but uh, the Warrington one had a good, uh, good rhythm to it and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I didn't know the words, but I enjoyed listening to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure you'll pick it up after, after a few games. Our England one's pretty good. Uh, gets it bouncing. Um, our conditioner, Chris Byron's fully involved in that. Um, 
he's on the England as well set up, so he has a big part to play in that, and that's as far as I'll go. It's probably the England one at the moment. We, we've had a couple along the way, but last year we got together when we was at the World Cup, or 2017 we got together at the World Cup, and we come up with this, a few of the boys come up with this song, and we just said we'll give it a trial, and everybody absolutely loved it. And it, it lasted the whole World Cup, and then it made it to the Denver test, and it made it to the uh, end of season internationals last year as well. So yeah, that's probably just for the, you know, the energy it brings and everyone's just involved. Yeah, it's, yeah, I'd probably say the England one at the moment. I think he just hit one for Man of Steel. I think we've got a few. Chris Hill's always, always up there. Man of Steel, he's kind of Mr. Consistent. I think, you know, Mike Cooper was outstanding last year. I think Blake's showing some, some um, great signs of, of possibly taking that. Obviously, you've got Steph. Daz Clark was back to some of his best, but, you know, I think he's been tipped in the press and, from what I've seen in training so far, I'm going to say Blake Austin. I think Daz Clark last year was coming back to some of his form. I won him the Man of Steel. Um, I think Mike Cooper. Yeah, there's one person I'll, I'll tip Blake. I think Ben Murdoch myself, I think he's probably one of the best followers in the league. Um, I think you've got a few there. Yeah, I think that's standard rugby league now, isn't it? Coffee shops. Last person to get a brew round without any shadow of a doubt is Jack Hughes. I'd say it used to be Illy. Illy used to be the world's tightest person, but. I don't know what's happened to him. The last 18 months, he's, he's kind of switched that and he's been overtaken and overtaken by a long way. That's an easy one. It's Jack Hughes. But obviously, back home, it's a, it's a big thing. We duck off between, between sessions and, and drink a lot of coffee. But um, over here, it's a little bit of a different... Like, we training's a little bit away from, from coffee shops and we're sort of into our next session a bit quicker. So um, it's a little bit different. I've, you know, I've got my, my coffee machine at home, which you know, I enjoy using. But we've also got some really good... Yeah, uh, spots just at Stockton Eve, just down the road. So uh, certainly with the the kids and the missus, we get down there a lot, but um, not as much of a coffee culture here within the group, I suppose. Yeah. Jack Hughes will never ever offer to buy a coffee, or if he does, he's after something back. So yeah, Jack Hughes is is the one. Um, he's the tightest person I've ever come across. Best dad joke. Ooh, I've got plenty of these. Any dad jokes? You can give us your best one. I don't. No, I'm a cool dad, man. I don't. <laughs> Steph would have dad jokes, I don't have dad jokes. Right now. Paddy was walking down the street, he's walking down, he's got this big heavy wardrobe on his back. He's walking along and Mick shouts across him and says, Paddy! He says, oh, where's Murphy? I thought he'd be helping you carry that big wardrobe. He says, yeah he is, he's inside holding the clothes. <laughs> you can have that one. I've not got a joke, I've got... Um, it's not so much a joke. It's something that all dads would say when ice cream man comes round and tunes on. It means he's run out of ice cream. Sorry, kids.